Today I'm going to show you my updated Sword Soul Tech profile for the February 2022 Banlist. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Duels Down Under and as promised I have my updated Sword Soul Deck profile ready to show you right now. The latest ban list did cost the deck a couple of staple cards but with a few changes I still believe that Sword Soul is the strongest deck moving into the new format. Losing cards like Arch Nemesis Protoss and Imperial Order do significantly hurt the deck as well as two copies of Pot of Desires but there are so many strategies that can now be implemented in the deck to try and make it even stronger. This deck is a 45 card Sword Soul deck. I know you're probably there cringing but when you see some of the tech options in the deck you'll understand why I've decided to head over 40. Let's get first of all into the main deck. Then I'll show you the extra deck. I'm not going to show you a side deck because as we all know, side decks are super specific to the tournament you're playing in. It might be a locals, it might be a remote YCS. Of course, it's going to look different for every matchup that you have to come up against. Let's get into the main deck. So let's start with the Sword Soul cards. Very, very standard lineup. We have three copies of Sword Soul Moye. We have three copies of Long Yarn. I've actually upped this to three instead of having it already at three. I was running it at two and did like it. But with the extra space in the deck, three copies does seem right. We're running two copies of Taya. The only one we don't run at three because really you don't want to see it too often in your opening hand. Our pseudo Sword Soul starter card, we have the incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous. This is always going to be run at three. Definitely, even now that we're running the Hulk of Fibrax combos, having this tuner is absolutely amazing when you can get it on board. They are our Sword Soul monsters. Sword Soul spell cards, we are running three copies of Emergence. Don't really need to say much about this card. It is a fantastic piece to be able to get you the pieces that you need into your hand. Then we're running the one copy of Sacred Summit, arguably the one card that could be taken out of the package, but we are going to run it anyway. And of course, one copy of Sword Soul Blackout. If I did decide to take out the Sacred Summit, I probably would substitute in another copy of Blackout because that token generation when it's banished is just really, really strong and can come up more than once in a duel. That's our Sword Soul package. Let's have a look at our 10 years now. So we have a 10 year spirit Ashuna at three. That hasn't changed. I've taken Adhara from two to three. Again, having that extra tuna in the deck for the Hulk of Fibrax combos does make it very, very good and very, very, um, does make it very, very good and able to be utilized more frequently. And of course, we are still running the two copies of Tenny Spirit, the shooter. Being able to send those cards back to the hand are quite, uh, is quite a good effect. And I really, really do like the shooter as a card. But I do think three copies is a little bit too clunky. To go alongside that, we are running three copies of Vessel. Running the Vessel is um, a good option here. It does let us get our graveyard going. It does also get us a Tenny card to our hand as well. Now for the hand traps. We are running three copies of Ash Blossom and three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Not really much to say about these guys. Still probably the most utilized hand traps in the game. The next ones are a little bit different. We have introduced Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit to the deck. Now that ETL is back at three, we are going to be utilizing that to not only use Ash Blossom as a form of, in sorry, to not only use Ghost Ogre as a form of interruption, but also to utilize ETL to get that tuner on board so we can start going off with our Hulk Fibrax plays. And we are running a single copy of Effect Veiler. Not only does it act as some good interruption, but again, it is a tuner that can be used off of Hell of Fibrax when we summon it to the field. To go along with our 
Link plays, we are playing a single copy of Deskbot 001. That is to help our Auroradon. And of course, newly from the list, Destrudo the Lost Dragons. Brishan, if only this was a worm, not a dragon, it would be absolutely busted in this Sword Soul deck. But we are gonna run it anyway because it seems to pop up in my hand in testing quite regularly. Fingers crossed when I take it to my first tourney, it's gonna happen again. Pay half your life points to go into those epic plays. Some support cards for the deck. We're running three copies of Emergency Teleport, like I said. The three and two is great. We don't really want to see more than one copy of this, but if we need to, it is not a once per turn thing. I didn't really want to run any other Psychic cards, but the other one I was thinking about running was, of course, Recover. We go through our extra deck quite easily in this, and Recover can be quite a good card to utilize. It does cost a few, uh, a couple of thousand life points, but can actually be quite useful in the long run. A copy of Pot of Desires, nearly down to one copy, but it is still good to add a little bit of consistency. The only going second card we are running in this deck is Forbidden Droplet. If we do have to go second, having one of these in our hand will give us an opportunity to try and negate any onboard issues that we are going to face before we get into our own plays. I took out a bit of chalice for this in the updated build. Like I said, 45 cards in the main deck. It is testing quite well. You wouldn't even know it. The consistency is unreal. Let's have a look at the extra deck now. So we'll start with our Synchros. We've got a Baronet de Fleur. Obviously that negate and that destroy, the destruction effect is really, really good. We are running one copy of the Chen Ying and two copies of Chi Chao. Not much to say about these guys, except for the fact that with the new Sword Soul card coming out this weekend, I believe, it is going to get really tight inside the Sword Soul extra decks. I'm not too sure what I'm going to need to take out to actually find room for that level 10. But once I've done that, I may update the deck profile online for you guys once again. We are running one copy of Draco Berserker of the Tenyi and one copy of Adamantipator Risen Dragite. Since I started playing this deck, Dragite is the card that I don't think I've ever made at all. So for that new level 10 card coming out in Battle of Chaos, Dragite may be the card that gets the cut. Onto our Yang Zings, we're playing one copy of Chow Fang still. Not too worried about Drytron anymore, but this guy is there for the Dogmatica and Invoked decks. Still those light monsters can really, really play some havoc with this deck. So trying to keep those at bay is always going to be pretty important. We are running, of course, two copies of Baxia. Oh, how I would love ulties of these. We'll have to deal with the secrets though. And of course, one copy of Yazi. With all of the token generation from Aurora Don and of course, Deskbot 001, getting into Yazi and getting your worm plays going like that is so easy. You don't have to worry about drawing Moye anymore. You don't have to worry about opening up with Virtuous Ecclesia. As, as long as you can kind of get your Halka Firebrax plays going, which is a tuner and any other normal summon, you're going to go okay. There are our Synchros. Moving on to our Links. So we have two copies of Monk of the Tanyi. Because we have added a couple of extra Link monsters, I did have to cut one copy of Monk. It seems to be the one card that is being cut, but I, I would still like to try and find room for another copy because in those late games when it does get a bit grindy, that extra copy of Monk can actually be really, really helpful. Along with the two copies of Monk, we are running the one Shaman. Great card, it doesn't come up too often, but when it does, it's usually enough to push you from a really bad situation into a situation where you may be able to fight back and bring the game back to your side. We've taken out Berserker or Draco Berserker of the Tenure. There's no space for it. As much as I like that card, there's just no room anymore. And of course, we are running the illustrious Christron Halka Fibrax and the Mecha Phantom Beast Aurora Don. Just to get those 
Tuna and Synchro plays going. Like I said, token generation is really important in this upcoming format to get the plays going. This deck is super consistent to the point where you can make a full board without even having to normal summon. If you want to see how to do that, let's get this video to 15 likes and I'll do a combo video so you can see how I can get a full board of monsters that will give you an OTK without having to normal summon. That's it for the deck profile, guys. I would like to know what you think of this new build of Sword Soul. And also in the comments, let me know how you're going to play the deck moving forward. It's a pretty rad deck. I've loved it since Burst of Destiny came out and I'll continue to evolve as the deck does. Thank you so much for tuning into the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one.